Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the Back Off Teardown Lab. Today we're going to be looking at this picture frame. This is one of those old photo frames. This is an E Starling. This was the first of its kind to feature a Wi Fi uh, adapter and it had a, a web service. And the idea was, of course, as we know, Kodak tried to do this, where you would be able to log in to the site, upload pictures or send emails to a particular email address and they would appear on the photo frame. Now the issue with this photo frame is that it seemed to stop connecting to the internet and I suspect now that the internet service that this frame relied on no longer exists. So I've got no worries now about opening this up and having a look inside. I know there are some family snaps on there because it does retain a few in the memory but uh, I do believe they're duplicates so we can risk losing those. Um, things like Chromecasts and your various gadgets that connect to the internet now actually replace these to some degree. I mean if you want a background on your Chromecast you can easily set that to your Google account. So I don't really know if these have a place in the world anymore. So four screws, that's nice. Um, just to show you by the way, it was quite a nice unit. It did have uh, all these various options to go through the various modes and play and stop. Ooh. Ah, okay, so there we go. We have a quite a nice acrylic bezel, really, with some uh, pressed in nuts. Is that surprisingly nice. So, the moment of truth. Oops, I've lost my screws. Let me just put those to one side. And you know, you did see it did have a whopping great 512 megabyte card in there. Interestingly, look, I don't I don't think I put those fingerprints on there, but maybe I did. Who knows? Okay, sorry for the jump cut, but the screws were particularly tenacious, um, and I've already actually attacked what's underneath here because there was a lot of hot glue. I'll just show you the screen module. The screen module is quite interesting because it's actually got some sort of adapter board. So I've seen this before, this type of controller, and then clearly they've got this additional controller board to convert it to whatever this um, photo frame uses. So interesting in itself. I'm not probably not going to bother researching what the different kinds of thing going on here, but the, it's a nice panel. It's reasonably well made and it's actually very sturdy. That's actually probably most of the weight of the system is in that panel. So looking inside now at the main board, compact flash reader. For those of you who don't know, Compact Flash actually is very similar, in fact, identical to the IDE bus. That's why you can boot from it. I'm going to take out these four screws. I can see already down here there's a small PCB which looks suspiciously like an antenna. Another very firm screw there. Ah, okay. Again, hot glue everywhere, so we're going to have to try to lever this antenna up. Oh, there we go, it came nicely. So there you go, a whiffy, a very simple Wi Fi adapt uh, antenna there. Let's see if I can focus it for you. There you go. About the bare minimum you can get away with. What else can we see? Well, I don't know really what this chip is, but don't really care because the main event is on the other side of the board. Look at that. Plenty of things to see here. So that's an SD card reader and I've never seen one so industrial. Look at that. It's got an eject mechanism on it. Right, look, it's all in a nice big can. I mean, this is old school technology. USB regular port and a USB micro. This looks suspiciously like a serial diagnostic port. Space here for a battery. So it could have had a lithium cell on one revision for some reason or another. It's a Sigmatel, Sigmatel.com chip. In fact, let's, let's zoom in on those for you 
hardcore chip junkies. I know how you like to see them. So there's your Sigmatel chip. There's your flash memory, probably containing the photos. It's probably a bit of NAND. Might be separated actually. Maybe some of it's the firmware for the Sigmatel and some of it's for storage. And I don't really know, I don't rightly know what that chip's doing, but uh, when you can comment down below and let me know. Save me the effort of Googling it. You can Google it for me. But this is the bit that interests me. I love seeing this because clearly they needed USB for the Wi-Fi. Sorry, clearly they needed a Wi-Fi solution. And what was easier? Well, add an extra additional USB port and then just use a Wi-Fi module. And that's what they've done. Get rid of the hot glue. Again, they love the hot glue. Um, interestingly, some jumpers here. Let me see what those jumpers might be doing. Nothing obvious. Maybe when we take this out, we can see better. Oh, the jumpers are to do the power. And there's an additional switch. So maybe it had a power switch here, an optional power switch, which are being jumpered, or maybe there's an alternate power source. Perhaps you could get power from the USB ports. Who knows? Who cares? I, I really don't. Um, interesting semicircular piece of rubber as a spacer. It looks like a foot off something that's been cut into quarters and glued in there. There's the antenna. You know, everything was nicely glued down, so they didn't uh, want this breaking in transit. And uh, here is effectively a USB Wi Fi uh, adapter. And I can have a go plugging that into a computer in a minute and see what that's recognized as. But uh, before I do, let's see if we can read what's on this chip. It's a bit difficult, I think. I don't think we're going to get it. My eyes aren't good enough and I cannot focus the camera that well. Um, let me just have a go. It looks like... Whew, An 88V8388. No. You know what, guys? I'm going to bow out of that one. There is no way I can tell what's on that ship. So let me just pop that into a PC and come back to you. Let's see what this registers as. Hi, I'm back. I have tried the USB device in my PC, but unfortunately, there's no drivers for Windows 10, and I doubt there ever will be as this is over eight years maybe ten years old this digital picture frame so I hope that this has been informative to you and now solves the problem for you of deciding to crack open that broken digital frame you've got to see what's inside now you don't have to just send it straight to the recycling center possible some salvage value out of the panel even or at least the backlight might be a bit of fun but uh, I'll be keeping these two on my shelf of curiosity and everything else will be going in the bin. So please feel free to click subscribe. I'd love to you to leave some comments down below and let me know of your um, digital picture frame experiences. And just before I go, look here, I've just realized it's a Great War 8 inch V1.1 070629. So there we go. Could that be 2007? Very old tech. As ever, thanks for watching.